In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, welcome to our worship service today for May 30th for Holy Trinity Sunday. And here we are at Trinity Lutheran Church celebrating our namesake. And I'm glad you're with us and I'm glad you're able to join us from wherever you are. And I hope you will be able to raise your voice in song as we sing shortly. I have a couple of announcements to make this week. First one's from Carol Boyd, and she was trying to get this into the newsletter, but something went wrong with the email. She wanted to thank everyone for all of the cards that you sent to her following the death of her daughter, Lee. We pray with you as well, Carol, each and every day. The other one is about David and Olaf and Una Meadows are, who are leaving to go to Edmonton. The scriptures are filled with stories of people who have been called to move to new places like Abraham and Sarah, Mary and Joseph, Paul and Barabbas. They've been filled with uncertainty about what lay ahead. And each of these biblical people could not have found their moves easy. Well, imagine it's the same for David, Olaf, and Una. Here they are filled with excitement, trusting that God's calling them to a new place. And now to you, the three of you, our beloved friends who are preparing to leave us and go to a new place, a new home and a new church. I have these words from Carol and Aaron's. Now go with the wind at your back and the sun on your face, with a song in your heart and the promise of grace. Go in peace and in truth and let love lead your way. Go with God. Godspeed, my friends.
Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauties of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. In the movie The Shack, Mackenzie, the main character, is invited to the shack by Papa. At least, that's what the note in the mailbox read. Papa is the name that Mackenzie's wife, Nan, gives to God. The movie is full of mystery, and one of those mysteries is the Trinity, the three-in-one. And there's usually introductions involved with things like this, so maybe we should let God do the introductions. How about some introductions? I'm Aluja. I have a lot of names, but that's one of my favorites. Or if you want, you can call me what Nan does. You know Nan? Oh, yes. Very well. Are you saying that you're... I am. The I am? I am that I am. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Already quoting scripture. And you bet my son. Ready to see you, Mac. Your son? Of course. And, um, Sarah, you? Sarah who? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, it means a breath of wind. So, which one of you is... I am. And you have no idea how much I love you. Last week was Pentecost Sunday and I gave you a picture of the Holy Spirit. The one who grieves and groans when words and prayers and understanding fail. In your pain, the Holy Spirit groans with you. This week is the Trinity Sunday, and we celebrate that triune God that's an essential part of our confessional statements. Do you remember what confessional means? A statement of what we as a church believe to be true. A statement of faith. The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is probably the most complex thing you ever have to try and explain to Christians, and especially hard to teach, especially to young people, and even harder to explain to non-Christians. Three gods? No, just one god, but three parts. Well, yes, yeah, sort of, but not separate parts. Not like one-third God, one-third Jesus, one-third Holy Spirit. So the, the same thing. Well, yes, yeah, sort of, but they're each different. And they're each God, but they're not each other. You see what I mean? And as soon as you get what you think is a good working description and you hang on tightly to that, 
it gets away from you. The more you squeeze it, the more you wrestle with it, it's kind of like tackling a person made of jello. Now, some have tried and they use these words God the creator, God the redeemer, God the sustainer, which is helpful. It fits the main character of each part, but it's never complete. Maybe this would help. On my Facebook page, the subtitle for my main page reads Dad and Husband, Lutheran Pastor, Guitar Player, Mountain Biker, Photographer. Well, these are all functional titles that I give myself. I am, and I, I do each one of those things, and they're listed somewhat in order that I became each one. I became a dad in my first marriage, but I didn't become a Lutheran pastor until after I'd married Trudy and had two more children. I've been a guitar player since 1970 and a photographer since 1974. The order of priority that I give each one of those, well, changes on a regular basis. Always seems to be dad and husband first. And I have many more passions that I could list, but we don't need to do that. So how should we title and describe the Trinity? And yet, as I said last week, the Holy Spirit does a great part of the heavy lifting when it comes to being with us, groaning with us, grieving with us. However, as I was reading through the Romans texts that we're using today, I realized that the Holy Spirit seems to have many functional titles all to herself, kind of like my dad and husband, pastor, guitar player list. Well, the titles with the Trinity can be easy to say. The one that trips right off the tongue is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it features in our Sunday worship, like in the apostolic reading. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. When we say the triune God, we're saying something about who God is beyond, before, and even after the universe, that there's community within God. Our experience of this is reflected in Paul's words today. When we pray to God as Jesus prayed to his Abba, his Father, in every day an intimate parental address, the Spirit prays within us creating between us and God the same relationship that Jesus had with the one who sent him. Do you remember those magic eye pictures where everything seems like random patterns? But then you did the right thing with your focus and your eyes, and lo and behold, the magical, high-clarity, three-dimensional image would appear, then just as magical would disappear. I wonder if that's all we ever get to look and see with the workings of the Trinity. The Trinity is a mystery, hard or impossible to define, surprising and confounding to understand, yet we all know it is real. Somehow we just know that. In the Romans text that Kathy's going to read for us shortly, I've highlighted the different functions that the Holy Spirit seems to do. The Spirit seems to be, well, a helper to the two other in the Trinity. So how do you experience the Trinity? Or more so, how do you experience the silent one, the Holy Spirit? For me, I would say that I've clearly heard God's voice a number of times. I've experienced the presence of Jesus with me. And he spoke to me also. The Holy Spirit? Well, I know she's always there with me, but is it more like the wind? I can't feel a holy wind directly, but maybe more so I can feel and notice the effects of that holy wind. The same as the wind outside. You can see the effects of the wind as it blows in the world around us. Maybe that's the same with the Holy Spirit. 
So listen now to Kathy as she reads from Romans 8 and listen for those, well, functional support roles that the Holy Spirit does. A reading from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Since we're in Romans 8, and we read a pretty big chunk of Romans 8 these last two weeks, I couldn't leave without sharing the closing verses. Even though we are vague about the workings of the Trinity, even though we celebrate and confess the Holy Three, when it comes down to it, the Holy Three really only have one function, to bring us love. Kathy, tell us about the love in the Holy Trinity. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
With the church around the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for nations currently experiencing war or turmoil as we name Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Mexico, Turkey, Somalia, Iraq, Libya, Maghreb region, and Sahel region. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all our neighbors in faith, for all those in the Thames ministry area, and especially this week for Pastor David Wirt and the members of St. Ansgar, London. We also pray for those within our congregation in need of holding and lifting up as we name Carlos and Myrna Rodriguez, Lauren and Jean Culler, Susan Okanon, Dennis Liska, Vern Leffler, Thea Soter, Marg and Don Cook, Marianne Stewart, Gunther Sturm, and New Mantle and those close to our congregation, Madeline Kells and her son, Jack Kells. Al Barrett, husband of Carol. Giles Grenier, friend of the Becker family. Lois Bailey, sister of Jean Holmstein. Richard Jackman, husband of Nancy. Deborah Kenny and Bobby Mantle, daughter and son of Lou and Sharon. Steve Hodgins, son-in-law of Linda Reynolds. Frida Paler, friend of the congregation. And we add the names of those close to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community of Trinity, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. 
We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine. Make his face to shine. Shine upon you. Shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. And lift up his countenance to you. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace.